This video will demonstrate the steps to replace a Bike Friday ticket stem, and is a supplement to the written instructions available on Bike Friday's website. We'll be demonstrating on a ticket that has a hyperfold cable. This means that some of the steps shown will be skipped in the case of an impulse fold or twiddly ticket. In many cases, the tools shown here will be sufficient, although depending on the components involved, some additional tools may be necessary. Begin by removing any accessories that may be present on the front end of the bike. These may include a rack, a fender, a lighting system, wired computer. Note that even if a fender is not present, the bolt on the front center portion of the fork crown must be removed. Keep this bolt as it needs to be reinstalled later. It will be helpful to remove the front brake cable or the brake arm with the cable attached to it so that the front fork can be removed and set aside for reinstallation. The stem riser and handlebars also need to be removed and set aside for reinstallation. Several items will need to be transferred from the previous folding stem to the new folding stem. Note that for a standard size small and medium ticket, there will be a brass shim with the riser clamp. If it's present, it must also be used with the new stem. In addition to the stem riser clamp, a reflector and the stem to mainframe latch peg clamp will need to be transferred to the new stem. The head badge may also be transferred using a heat gun, some solvent, and double-sided emblem tape. For a hyperfold ticket, first remove the nut where the cable is anchored to the frame. To do this, use an adjustable wrench to hold the wrench flat stationary on the cable itself, and a 10 millimeter combination wrench to remove the nut. Once the cable end is free of the frame anchor, pass it underneath the bottom bracket and up towards the front of the frame as far as it can go. We need to create slack around the stem so that the stem can be folded down. Next, fold down the stem and find the U-bolt where the other end of the cable is anchored inside the head tube. To remove this U-bolt, you'll need the adjustable wrench and an 8mm wrench to loosen the nuts on the U-bolt. Once the U-bolt is free, pass the cable outside of the upper portion of the folding stem and out of the stem clamp. Finally, pull the cable completely out of the steer tube and uh, it's now free from the frame. At this point, Relieve the headset bearing preload in preparation for reassembly. Note that if you have a Chris King or a Cane Creek headset, two 36 millimeter headset wrenches will be required. Using a four millimeter hex wrench and an eight millimeter combination wrench, loosen both sets of the bolt and nylock nut of the fork crown clamp bolt. Now the fork is ready to slide downward off the steer tube. Be sure to keep track of the order of headset pieces as you lift the stem upward, removing the stem and upper headset pieces together. If headset spacers were included with your new stem, install them on the steer tube first, followed by the headset pieces in the same order that they were installed on the previous stem.
Now the new folding stem assembly is ready to slide into the frame. Reinstall the headset's lower bearings and crown race, and slide the fork upward onto the steerer tube. With the fork slid up to the point that there are no gaps in between any of the headset pieces, verify that approximately one millimeter of steer tube protrudes below the fork crown. If necessary, adjust the number of spacers above the headset to ensure that one millimeter of steer tube protrudes below the fork crown. Note that the alignment hole in the new steer tube must line up with the fork crown alignment boss. Now tighten the fork crown clamping bolts. Notice that each bolt passes through a binder with the second part of the binder threaded. The bolt engages these threads with the nylock nut acting as a second mechanism to ensure the clamping force of each bolt remains tight. Make sure each bolt is tight relative to one another and that each nut is tight relative to each bolt. To ensure that the bolts are locked in place adequately, attempt to back out each bolt. They should be able to move only a very small part of a rotation. Now adjust the headset so that there's no play in the bearings, and the bearings feel smooth and not binding. For a hyperfold ticket, next thread the new hyperfold cable onto the frame, beginning with the cable end as opposed to the threaded rod end passing from the rear to front through the main frame cable guide. Continue threading through the bottom of the steer tube upward. We have found that turning the fork to the left when initially bringing a hyperfold cable up to tension will help to relieve any effect on steering that torque in the cable might apply. Next, thread the U-bolt onto the cable end and pass the cable end through one of the stem plate eyelets from the inside outward. Note that the holes in the stem clamp, or Pac-Man as we call it, are offset towards one edge. The Pac-Man should be oriented so that these holes line up with the holes in the stem plate that the cable is passing through. Now thread the cable through the Pac-Man and loop the cable back through the remaining hole in the Pac-Man. Pass the cable through the corresponding hole into the stem plate and fish it out with a small tool so that it can pass back through the U-bolt. To gauge the correct positioning of the cable and U-bolt, adjust so that there is 10 centimeters from the inside edge of the Pac-Man to the short end of the cable. Pull excess cable towards the long end. Tighten the U-bolt by holding it stationary with an adjustable wrench while tightening the nuts with an 8mm wrench. Make sure that the nuts are evenly tight. And ensure proper tightness by looking for crimping of the hyperfold cable at the U-bolt. With the folding stem still folded down, now is a good opportunity to reinstall the stem to mainframe latch peg clamp. Position the peg into the latch on the mainframe and tighten the bolt. Now fold the folding stem into the riding position and pass the hyperfold cable under the bottom bracket shell, making sure that it doesn't wrap around or pinch any brake or shift cables. Position the hyperfold cable anchor into the frame anchor and place a washer and thread the 10 millimeter nut onto the threaded cable stud. Prevent the cable from rotating by holding the flats with an adjustable wrench and tighten the nut with a 10 millimeter wrench. Continue tightening the nut until the cable shows less than one inch of deflection. The final step will be the bounce test to make sure that the hyperfold cable is at the proper tension. But first, reinstall all the remaining components. Make sure the handlebars line up correctly with the fork. Been riding in fast.
brass rattlers I saw two nose. I've been riding them flat wheelers way down the road. I've been riding them blind passengers dead injured, kicking up cinders. I've been having some hard traveling. It's very important that even if a fender is not used on your ticket, uh, this bolt needs to be put back in place. This helps ensure that the alignment is correct and is an uh, extra safety to keep the fork attached to the steer tube. A ticket will typically need its quick release lever on the right hand side of the bike to maximize clearance when the bike is folded. The bounce test to verify proper ticket hyperfold tension means that cable tension will provide 2 to 3 centimeters of bounce at the center of the bike when the seat mast is unlatched from the riding position. Increase cable tension as necessary by adjusting the nut at the cable anchor at the rear of the bike. 